morning. I thought I'd give you a little bit of uh, finishing action here. You may remember this ornament. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a little frog in my throat this morning. One of my ornaments for my Christmas in July. I'm finally getting this finished up. It has been sitting here and I've been thinking about what I want to do. I mentioned in my floss tube video that I wasn't happy with the original cording that I made and that I was thinking I wanted to go back and um, add some of the rayon marlet to the cording. And so that's what I did. Suggestions by um, a couple people on my floss tube comments really help. One of the suggestions was to add beads to the edging. And I wasn't too sure about it until I started, and I love it. Love it. So I have a couple different color beads here poured out in my bead bowl. And I'm just using a strand of floss, the over dyed floss, and just attaching along. So I thought I'd do a little bit of this here. I'm trying to put it so that each swirl of the cord has a bead kind of nestled in there. And I think it's working pretty well, but it means I really have to think about where I'm poking my needle through and where it's going to land. I'm going to get this completed before I do my floss tube video today. Today I'll be, I just have a couple finishes and I'll be announcing all of the final winners from my Instagram tag here, the JHC Christmas in July. I just love how that's looking. I think that little extra bling is picking up the metallic, the silver DMC there on the ornament. It's a little bit blown out because of the light. Let me put this out of the way and get a truer feel for it. I'll just bump the camera so you're bouncing around. Isn't that pretty? I like it, I like it, I like it. Fancies it up a bit. So, <clears throat> like I said, I'm going in. <clears throat> Goodness. Remnants of the cold still, I think. Going in on each swirl. Going through the cording, picking up a bead. I'm on one of the purple beads. And then I, what I'm doing for when I go back through is I kind of, again, follow the swirl down. So I follow the swirl down and I want the bead to nestle in here. So that's where I'm just taking little bites out of both the front and the back fabric and putting it in. And it just goes right in the right place. So come up through the cording. Come up through the cording. One of the silver lined beads this time. Follow the swirl down, and that's where I go back through to the back side. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. The beads I'm using are a size 8 seed bead. They are something I had in my stash. I believe the way they were bagged, I believe this was probably from a Laura Nelkin kit that um, I did not use the called for beads. I often do that. Um, it's not that Laura doesn't have great taste in beads, but I often have other ideas of how I'd like it to look, and so I don't use the beads that she sends. I will pick something else from my stash. And it also makes mine a little bit more unique from different from everybody else who's doing the same thing. And as you can see, that means I can use the beads on something else. And this, I believe, is perfect. 
in my own humble opinion. So there you go, my little bead bowl, I believe is another um, goodie from one of Laura Nelkin's kits. It's good when you're using two color beads, two colors of beads, if you can see, as you can see, I just put all the beads in one color because I don't have enough to really worry about a whole lot, but it is perfect for something little like this. When you just want easy, quick access to your beads. And there we go. I am going to continue with this and I will have the finished pillow to show on my floss tube video, which will be happening later today. Hope you guys enjoyed that little sneak peek. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Morning, gang. Um, I start the video out with um. Did you hear that, Christine? You and me both. I don't know how we get rid of it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my floss tube channel. This is Jan at Jan Hicks Creates. And it's actually not morning anymore. It's 1213. I'm getting a little bit of a later start today. Um, <clears throat> not <coughs> I'm sorry. I have, I still have some drainage from the cold. I'm pretty much better, but oh, the phlegm. I hate it. My poor cat. Talk about a total segue at the very beginning of the video. My poor cat, Nina. <clears throat> She's very, um, she gets very annoyed by loud sounds. Um, I think probably between fire alarms going off in the building and um, who knows what. She's a scaredy cat. It's been very rough on her with Mike and I coughing. She will not stay in the same room when we're coughing. And it's still with this like... <clears throat> that I'm constantly doing she's just like I'm out of here I cannot hang with this so I hope that you can hang with it because Nina sure can't anyways <clears throat> getting a little bit later of a start because I wanted to get some things finished I've been rather um, focused more on stitching and knitting than the finishing for the last few days I was just here Friday um, so it hasn't been that long of a time but I did want to have a couple things to show you so that's why I'm a little later. Doesn't matter. This is going to go up and you're going to see it at some point, right? Let's see. So it is Tuesday, July 31st. Christmas in July is officially over at the end of today. I had a lot of fun doing it. I love all the little things that I did. Um, I loved, you know, I haven't really, I haven't done any cross stitch ornaments for myself. I might have one hanging on my own tree that I did years ago. Most of the ornaments I've done in the past I've given away. And I don't know whether I'll be giving these away or not, um, but I had a lot of fun doing them and I have a lot of fun looking at them. I think the finishes I've done are really, really good. I'm really happy with everything. So I will probably do this next year, but I am ready to move on back to my other whips. Um, back to my Harbor Haven, all that all that good stuff. I'm ready to move on. But we will be showing you the, the last of the finishes. Well, not the last. I still have a couple more, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but what I got done and um, stitching. And, yeah, just, just a few other things. This probably isn't going to be a long one. I am putting a clip. Let's see. The pictures I'm going to put at the beginning of this video, I think, are going to be of the little... Um, kind of kayak trip that Mike and I did on Lake Powell. That's in Northern Arizona um, back in, I think that was our 2014 trip. Um, it's just a really peaceful setting um, out on the water. So just a few pictures of that. Um, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying those those po photos. I really enjoy posting them for you, so it makes me feel good to know that you that you like seeing them. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for all the sweet comments. Um, you guys are helpful. You are kind. You are complimentary. You're uh, you're the greatest. I really appreciate you being here. Um, yeah. So good days. Let's see. I actually have an update on Hawaii. 
it's not necessarily good news or bad news it's just that we have finally learned that this this form what happened to this this form that we've been waiting to have signed um, <clears throat> What happened to it? Why it's been taking so long? Let's see. So it was early June when Mike got the unofficial word, basically from the, the person that interviewed him who would be his boss out there. And I say would be because it turns out she's actually PCSing back here. But anyway, um, that was early June. June 11th, his immediate supervisor here, which is really the only one with skin in the game for this particular form, which says they're releasing him from his two years obligation in that office. He signed it on June 11th. Then it went out to Hawaii and it got lost somewhere in Hawaii. It finally got rustled up and got passed through whoever needed to see it in Hawaii. Well, it at least went through some offices out there, came back to the sister office back here at headquarters, got lost there in July, was finally found and was sent back to Hawaii. So he heard yesterday that the chief of staff in Hawaii um, is putting lighting some fires under some people to get that moving. He will hopefully get an email by the end of the week, so it has to come back to HR here, and they will then start looking. They have to make sure that Mike has the proper requirements to meet what the job, what they're asking in the job description, in the job write-up. Um, he shouldn't have a problem with that, but again, it has to be done, and you know that's when the official approval comes through. So hopefully by the end of the week, he will get that and things will start moving. So, what was lost is found. Hopefully things will happen. Let's see, tomorrow we head to Orlando. We're gonna be down there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. My son's graduation, my younger son's graduation from his um, game design school is on Wednesday. So, um, that, that should be fun. We're looking forward to that. My older son, who is also in Orlando, will be joining us for that, and then we'll be just having dinner afterwards and just kind of having a low-key get-together with them um, for a little bit. Both the boys will still be staying in Orlando. Ben does not. He has a couple possibilities for a job. One is a TA at the school that he is graduating from. Um, another is for a, a uh, and whether they do game design or more marketing stuff that they want to use his skills at. I haven't heard if he, if anything further is happening with those two possibilities. But hopefully, um, one of those will come through, if not one of the other ones that he's been applying to in the not too distant future. But for the now, for the for the time being, he will be in Orlando. Let's see what else. <clears throat> so we come back Friday, and then next. Friday or Saturday, I think Saturday, we get on the road for Canada. So we'll finally be bang making our trip to Canada. Barring any other illnesses, please send all the good healthy vibes our ways because barring other illnesses, we're getting on the road to Canada. Um, so we're excited to see our friends up there. They got a new kitten. His name's Charlie Bean. He was the runt of the litter. He was just, oh, I think she said like 15 ounces when they got him. Janine, my friend Janine is a fantastic photographer, and so she posts all these just wonderful pictures on Facebook and Instagram of um, life with Charlie Bean. She has another cat who is not at all impressed with Charlie Bean. <laughs> but anyways, I can't wait to see this little kitten because he is just the cutest. So Janine, I'm happy to see you too, but Charlie Bean's gonna be the star of the show. So let's see, August, um, September, we're still planning over Labor Day to go up to Connecticut. Um, we were going to cancel that so Mike could save his leave for later, and I'll tell you about that in a second, but we decided to just go ahead with it. Um, so that should be fun. Love New England. Probably won't quite be uh, leaf-changing weather yet, but I'll be happy to be up there. Um, and let's see, then in October, and of course, um, you know, while all of this is happening, I'm sure the gears are start going to start moving with the Hawaii move. Um, so hopefully all these plans that we're making are going to fall 
into place with whatever is happening with Hawaii. Mike is pretty sure that once we get through all the paperwork, once we get scheduled for a pack out, things are going to move pretty quickly. Even with that being said, with the thing with Sasha and his diabetes, we can't be there if we wait for Sasha until probably mid-December. Now, having said that, Mike's mother has offered to um, that they will take Sasha if we need to get out there. Um, they will take Sasha for whatever balance of time is needed um, until he can go, which is a very generous offer because, of course, you know, he eats raw food, which I'm not sure they understand what that entails. Um, and of course the shots twice a day, which they'll be fine with. They raised Weimar honors, they showed Weimar honors. They are used to dealing with animals in all stages of life. They had horses, um, so it's not the animal part, it's the raw food part. But anyway, we'll deal with that when the time comes because Mike's mother also asked in that same email, we will take Sasha. Can we come with you for your 10 day house hunting trip in Hawaii? <laughs> so. <laughs> I think she just wants to make sure that the mother-in-law has a proper accommodation in wherever we end up, um, which is fine. We have a good time together. Um, but anyway, so October, one thing we realized with all of this, our plan is to store the RV in Phoenix. If we waited until December to move the RV out there, um, nobody wants to be dry. I think I might have mentioned this. Nobody wants to be driving an RV in the winter. Um, not to mention that a lot of campgrounds closed, close in the winter. So what we're going to do is um, take the RV out in October. So we're going to do about a two-week trip going across the country, kind of the northern leg, and then down, I think, across New Mexico. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what the, I, what the real... Mike has it all planned out. That's what he does. I come along for the ride. I have my stitching and knitting. We are going to be stopping in Cincinnati, though. I requested that. I am going to send him off to write Patterson for the day because he loves that. And it, it, I'm sorry, honey, it bores me silly. So while he's at Wright Patterson, I'm going to go down to Keepsakes. And we're going to be staying at a campground at a KOA in Lebanon, which is about halfway between the two. So I will probably be getting an Uber down. We aren't towing the Jeep. The Jeep at that point, well, may or may not be um, on its way to Hawaii. Even if it isn't, we're not going to take it with us because we'll be flying back. Um, but anyways, I will spend the day at Keepsakes and he can go um, off to Wright Patterson and we will both be very happy. So we're going to be doing that on our trip out. We're also timing it so that we will reach Taos, New Mexico in time for the Taos Wool Festival. So I'll get to experience the Taos Wool Festival. Um, We've been to Santa Fe, we haven't been to Taos, so I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to see that area. So that should be cool. Um, then we will get the RV winterized and put it into storage out there and fly back here and um, deal with whatever else happens in the meantime with the pack out. At some point we will be having a 10 day trip to Hawaii to look for a place to live. Um, so this, this, you know, the first half of the month flew by, or the first half of the month, the first half of the year flew by. Um, the second half, I think, is just going to be bonkers. So stay tuned. It's going to be lively. All right, so that is enough of that stuff. Let's see. Floss tube news. Um, I know a lot of you are participating in the Country, country Stitchers Round Rob, and I am loving seeing your progress on that. I'm following the tag on, on Instagram. I really had wanted to participate myself, but I did not know, you know, I didn't know what life held. I didn't know where we would be. I didn't know when we would be. Um, I didn't want to take the chance of stuff get, getting lost in the mail. So I'm, I'm sitting this one out, but I'm loving seeing your progress, and I, I look forward to hopefully another one. Um, Let's see, I mentioned that, that my friend gave me her sewing machine in my last video. I had hoped to um, have sewn the ornaments that I need to finish with that instead of hand stitching them. I haven't done that yet. I have to admit I am a little intimidated by um, this 
machine sitting down here and it's not like I've never used a sewing machine before but it's been a while so let's see Ann Bassett one of the the ladies who commented on my last video recommended that I read through the manual and I'm definitely going to do that I'm going to read through the manual I'm going to play with just some scrap fabric um, that I have until I before I you know touch my my real things um, so yeah I also wanted to mention um, for those of you, either if you um, get Nancy Turner, Victorian Motto Threads, um, flosses, and haven't seen her post, um, she is doing another giveaway for her birthday. So she just did a bunch of Christmas in July. <coughs> Excuse me. She's doing another one. Her birthday is August 14th, so that's when this giveaway, the winners will be announced. This one is for, um, hmm, I didn't write it down. I don't know whether it's for a free month or her favorite colors I forget but she is doing another giveaway so run don't walk um, of her flosses so run don't walk and um, make sure you sign up for that you have to just put a post on the relevant um, you have to put a comment on the relevant post on her blog Victorian motto sampler shop and I'll link that below let's see all right so let's get on with it I have, um, like I said, a couple finishes. I just have my one whip, which is the Winter Wonderland, which I'm loving. A little bit of haul, and then I'll announce the winners. So, um, oh, the other thing I was going to mention, because I do think this is going to be a, a kind of a shorter video. Of course, I'm 15 minutes in and I've just been rambling, but um, we'll see. If, the, if it is a rather shorter video, um, I did a uh, IGTV video this morning just a real short one over there showing my finishing stitching on this so this is that northern star north star mandala ornament from one of the uh, just cross stitch ornament issues I had mentioned that I wasn't real happy with the cording I had made and so um, I was going to try to wrap some of the rayon floss around it and one of my brilliant viewers, let's see, who was it? Craft and Bev said, uh, you know, you can just undo that and redo it. <laughs> and I read that and I was like, well, duh. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? You know, sometimes the simplest things just pass me by. So that's what I did. I undid it and I redid it with the purple mixed in. And then one of my other lovely viewers commented with the idea, this was Leah DeWitt, she suggested that I add beads. And I thought that was a brilliant suggestion. So that's what I did. And the video, little video I did on IGTV this morning was showing me attaching the cording and the beads. And so I'm going to add that clip. Um, hopefully you will have seen that before I started this so that is that I am thrilled with it the beads are size 8 seed beads they are a mixture that I had gotten I'm pretty sure with one of Laura Nelkin's um, kits one of her club kits and I just you know I love I love Laura Nelkin's designs I love her color selection but sometimes you know it's not like I don't like it but sometimes um, there you can see the colors of the beads shimmery and pretty and purpley and clear and sparkly um, sometimes I just want a different look and I also like the idea of not having exactly the same as other people in the club so I had this pack of beads laying around and so that's what I used and you can see some of the purpley I interspersed the the, the silver lined um, with the purple and they have an a B finish on them so some of them are you can see kind of change colors these are size 8 seed beads. Did I say that? I don't remember. But anyways, I really, really like how this turned out. Thrilled with it. So I talk in the IG video as I'm doing it, kind of my, my um, method for attaching the beads and how I want them to fall, what I did. So anyways, hopefully that clip is at the beginning of this. <clears throat> my other finish is my Mill Hill Santa Believe. And I just got the recommended frame. I just got it from Amazon. 
So it came in two days. Yay, it's a prime thing. Um, I love this. I had, you know, again, I wasn't thrilled with stitching on perforated paper because I can't do in the sew do the sewing method. And I will say, I also had, um, I had my my joint here, my tendon, whatever you want to call it, whatever this thing is, was starting to get a little sore. If I stitched on this a lot, like a lot of hours during the day, because it's a little bit tougher, it's a bigger needle, it's two strands of floss. Um, and even though the holes on perforated paper, of course, are huge, there was a little bit of a resistance as I was pulling the needle through when, you know, and when there was more, when the holes were being, starting to be filled with other crosses, I was, there was a bit of, enough of a resistance that I was having to grip a little harder on the needle to pull it through and I could start to feel this get sore. So I just backed off. I just didn't do as much. But I love it. I love the beads. That star button is so pretty. I love the de texture and dimension. Of course, the colors are gorgeous. So another very happy Christmas in July finish. Yay! Love it, love it, love it. Let's see. So I only have the one whip, and that is Winter Wonderland. Let me check my notes and make sure I'm not forgetting anything. <clears throat> Okay, so I decided um, to just keep plugging away at this instead of picking out anything else, like another ornament or anything. And I, I didn't get a backing for this. So I am loving, oh, that looks okay. I'm loving how this looks. So you can see I've started the deer. I have a couple trees, have some cardinals. This deer is very happy. I don't know how he holds his head up with all those ant antlers. There's going to be more antlers coming up here and swirling around. And I think there's a red bird over here and a blue bird over here on his antlers. He's just gorgeous. Now, I am not using any. Well, the only called for fi um, fiber that I'm using is um, 3031. And I think that's the pole in the birdhouse. No, maybe that's still, yeah, I think that's 3031. So what happens, that what that means then is, um, so I look at the deer and the deer, the main color in the deer is, boy, I love how the variegation is looking on that. This is Primitive Cocoa by Victorian Motto and you can see the empty areas. Now, um, I think she shows in her picture, I don't know whether I can find that easily because it's, no, I'm not going to be able to find it easily. Dropbox, the, the, the version I have in Dropbox on here just is corrupted. It's not showing um, the picture. So um, anyways, the, in the picture that she has, she has another kind of um, grayish brown fiber and I don't remember what it what the called for is she is kind of, but it's kind of a grayish brown in here and um, of course the white tailed deer that I know that I'm most familiar with are white 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 and she has it's another bit of white you know back in the tail um, <clears throat> so I, I looked up being the um, curious and you know oh so accurate to reality person that I am and yes that is sarcasm um, I decided to look at pictures of other reindeers to think, well, maybe she's using a different kind of reindeer as deer, or a different kind of deer as her model. So I looked up pictures of reindeer and I looked up pictures of mule deer and they all pretty much, this is lighter than the rest of the coat. And so I am going to use a kind of a creamier, another Victorian motto, I forget which one I picked out, um, kind of a creamier, here, here, underneath here, the underbelly, and then for the tail. So I'm deviating a bit, um, but that's okay. When don't I deviate, right? I'm loving it. So I would say once I get the deer done, I'll be about halfway done. I have the bell snickle Santa that goes here in front of the deer, and then there's a bigger birdhouse over here. More trees, of course, 
and then all the snow to do. Okay, so maybe not quite halfway done, but um, I'm gonna continue to work on this. I'm not gonna work on it all day, every day like I've been. I'm still gonna work on it today. So I will get the deer done and hopefully get started on the Santa. Um, once August starts though, I'll just work on that one day a week. I'm going to have Winter Wonderland Wednesdays. So that will be, that will get done hopefully by Christmas. Um, I will also be getting back to Harbor Haven, like I said, kind of in a conundrum, a quandary. So the next three days I'm in Orlando. I had been planning once August 1st gets here to hit back hard on Harbor Haven so I can get most of that done, part eight done before part nine comes out on August 10th. Um, but you know, it's not the best travel piece. I'm doing it over one, as you know, on a 36 count. So um, I need to have good lighting. And I don't, I don't think whether I'm in a hotel room or in my son's apartment, I would be very surprised if I have any good lighting situation at all. I'll probably take it with me just in case, but um, I probably won't get a chance to work on that until I get back. So I will have to find something else to take. So I'll probably get back to happily ever after and see if I can get that finished while I'm gone. And maybe I'll take Indigo Lane too, because you gotta have a couple, right? Just in case you get bored. <laughs> anyway, where was I? That's all, the only whip I have. So, haul, not very much of that. I had mentioned, um, I showed you last time, let me find it, I had gotten this from Julie, Gulf Coast Stitches, Gulf Coast Stitcher from her site, Gulf Coast Stitches. Um, I fell in love with these. They're kind of wordplay-ish, but not. So she had had several others, not quite the whole series, but they had sold out. And as soon as they came back in, she let me know. So. I got the other ones that she had. Christmas time, I should have taken these out, sorry. <clears throat> Summertime, I love that. And most of these are over dyed threads. And springtime, isn't that pretty? Now there is an autumn time, or there used to be an autumn time. There's a little picture of it there. Um, Julie could not find it at any of the distributors she looked all over. So unfortunately, um, the series is not complete and that's very sad because we like complete series, but maybe she'll come across it at some point and hopefully, Julie, you'll let me know if you do because you know I'll be all over it. Um, and then I also got this feeling beachy keen because you know, I'm going to be beaching it for the next three years. So had to get that one. I also wanted to mention, um, okay, so it is the season. <sighs> Nancy Turner. I love her. I love her flosses. I resisted. So the tis the season Sal. She did one dying of her floss for that Sal and I resisted. And she did the second dying and I said no right I told you I'm gonna stitch this from stash I have enough floss I have plenty of over dyed I'll be getting another set in August right I have surely I have enough that I can find what I need then darn that woman if she didn't die a third set and I just fell to pieces and I emailed her as soon as she posted about that and I said okay Nancy sign me up <laughs> So I will be getting the Victorian Motto Flosses for Tis the Season as well. Now, having said that, um, one of my viewers from, uh, from the video on Friday, Louisa Sharp, made a comment, um, is your fabric big enough? And I'm pretty sure I measured, but you know something? I am going to take that as a cautionary tale and remeasure it. I meant to do that before the video so I could say, yes, indeed it is, and I forgot. Um, so I will be doing it as soon as this is done so I can be assured because, you know, somebody plants that little doubt in your brain and you're like, I measured it, didn't I? I think I measured it. Maybe I better check. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to check in my X-Stitch app and see if I put it in there. That would have been a smart thing to do. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Tis the season. 
36 count sterling linen by picture this plus i do not have dimensions on here so it's entered but that doesn't help me so louisa i will be measuring and double checking all right we have winners guys thank you so much for participating in christmas in july with me I know some of you have said that I helped you get some things done that have been languishing. I especially remember Kim's, um, her, she was doing the same ornament as me with the flying goldfish that we replaced with the star. She got that done. I think she said it's been like 10 years, 18 years since she started that. Oh, I'm sorry. I just flipped you. Um, Leanna, I think it was Leanna. Um, mentioned that I helped her get her fat men done so I'm glad I was inspiration you guys were inspiration for me certainly getting things finished um, you know there's this kind of push to have something to show you guys on these videos so like I said I, I had a ball with what I did and I want to reward you for reward you for playing along so that's what all this is about I am happy to help to give you my stash and help me clear stuff out in fact one of the things once once we and i'm hoping mike gets an email this week but once we know for sure when we're going that's going to be like the clock ticking and i'm going to start clearing out so um get ready i have more stuff to get rid of but first of all no winter lasts forever no spring skips its turn this is the one that wasn't claimed from my first week of christmas in july so i asked for more participants you gladly gladly chimed in that you liked winter and the winter and the winner is ingeborg a stitch too far ingeborg i am thrilled you had mentioned that you had a um you just had a heat wave over there and that you definitely like winter at this point so i am glad i could help cool you down i have commented on your comment already to send me an email with your address and i will get this in the mail so congratulations ingeborg now i'm going to turn to the giveaway for instagram and guys i will also um, dm you on instagram so that you know but for now i want to let you know here so first we have snowflakes <clears throat> the pretty one by country cottage needleworks which i just adored stitching it's such a pretty piece and this goes to stitches with with so stitches with sophie yay love that one let's see the maureen appleton christmas one the kit all the flosses and the fabric this goes to Cindy C. Stitches. Christmas is God's love. The stockings. I'm saving the yarn for last because they're my favorites. <laughs> the stockings. Both, both patterns. Goes to Magnolia Baby Crochet. And, okay. So... I had only shown you the one nugget kit and I am happy to say that Maria Kutzner won this congratulations Maria so as I said you get the beads you get a little dental floss threader on there and on the back of the card there's e uh, there's a code for you to put in to Ravelry to get the pattern so that it that goes to Maria now having said that and this is my contest and this is my channel so i can change the rules whenever i want um one of the most dedicated participants on my instagram hashtag jhc christmas in july was lizzie knits she was on to this and i felt bad that she was left out that, that, that the random number generator did not generate her. So, Lizzie, I have another kit. Now, lest you think I am giving away all of my nugget kits, I actually got four of these. I have a blue one and a green one as well. I helped Laura out at her booth at Indie Untangled last year 
the night before Rhinebeck started. And as a thank you, she gave me the four different colorways. So this is the one Maria is getting. This here is this one, and then I still have that and that. So Lizzie, you are getting a Nuggets kit as well. So guys, like I said, I will be posting or sending you a DM to let you know you won. I have not done that yet and letting you know how to get your address to me. So guys, I think that's it. It is only 34 minutes long. So after I put the pictures on the front and the, um, the little Instagram IGTV clip that I did this morning. I think that'll be a nice size. I was going to do a little video showing you my storage cabinet. Um, I may just do that separately. So anyways, thanks for joining me. I am um, out of here until Saturday, but I will be back next Tuesday with my regularly, regularly scheduled video. I'll be back to Tuesdays. Have a great week. Find the joy in your stitching, your knitting, whatever it is that, that you love to do. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.